Okay, if you were watching in the previous video before this, we worked on um, turning the words into the reactants, and then we used our reaction types to predict the products of these chemical, chemical equations. What I'm going to work on next for this video is deciding the states of matter for each of these things. Um, if you have been watching any of the other videos or you've been doing this in class with me, we have already gone over some rules about how to determine if something is a solid, a gas, a liquid, or aqueous. Um, and so what's already been said at this point is that for the gases and the liquids, remembering Brinkelhoff is, is really key here because Brinkelhoff is our list of diatomic elements, but it also helps me remember the gases and the liquids. And it's just a handful of elements to remember. So if I can remember those, then that means everything else has to come down to deciding if it's soluble or not. And my life should be a whole lot easier. So Brinkelhoff are our diatomic elements. And out of Brinkelhoff, the, the BR is a liquid. The I is a solid. Um, you're just going to have to memorize that. The, the, the Unkelhoff, as I refer to it, the N, the CL, the H, the O, and the F, the rest of it's gases. So basically, if I can remember Brinkelhoff and know that the Brie is not a gas, the rest of it is a gas. My, my life is, is getting to be somewhat easier. The bigger question is going to be, okay, if it's, so if it's not Brinkelhoff, how, how do I decide? Well, if it's not Brinkelhoff, it's either going to be a solid or we're going to write it as aqueous. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use our solubility rules that are in our reference table. They're right here. Um, the formatting got a little weird, but I can't change it as it's a PDF, so forgive the, the spacing of this. Um, all we do to follow our solubility rules is we, f we, we look at the anions, we look at the ending thing, and we see like if we have a nitrate, an acetate, you know, fluoride, so we've got sulfates, carbonates, hydroxides, etc. Like we just figure out which side it lands on. And I'm going to just do some examples of these. We're going we're gonna to dive right on in and do some explaining. If we have potassium right here, um, I need to know in my head that all of the elements as well, like every single element off the periodic table, if it's just elemental, is a solid except for the Brinkelhoff part of it and mercury. Mercury is a liquid. Well, K is not part of Brinkelhoff, so that means that I know it's going to be a solid because it's an element and it's not Brinkelhoff. Um, we could do the same thing over here. Silver is another element. It's not part of Brinkelhoff and it's not mercury, so that would be solid. That leaves me having to decide about silver chloride and potassium chloride. So really, we're only having to determine the compounds. When it comes to a compound, you're going to go to the solubility rules, and you're going to look. Both of these are chlorides, and we just we start somewhere on here, and we look till we find chlorides. Well, chlorides are right here, and this says that all chlorides, bromides, and iodides except silver, lead, and mercury are going to be soluble. So, um... We need to see if these are with our exceptions. Um, the first one, silver chloride. Well, chlorides are soluble unless they're with silver, which is going to make them be insoluble. That means silver is the silver chloride is going to be a solid. If it's insoluble, it will be a solid in water. The potassium chloride. Chlorides are soluble unless they're with one of these, and potassium is not an exception over here. So that means that this will be aqueous. Oops. Okay, we're going to repeat the same thing with the next one. Um, we have this one, carbonic acid. If you're in my classes, then I've told you, um, go by the other name. Like to do the solubility rules for this, the ionic name of this would be hydrogen carbonate. So find carbonates on here. All carbonates are insoluble. We're under the in insoluble side. Except group 1A and ammonium. So my question is, is this with a group 1A element? We flip over to the periodic table. We look right here. Here I see hydrogen. Very first thing, it's in group 1A. So what that means is that that'll kick it over to the other side. It would normally be insoluble, but because it's with hydrogen, that will make it aqueous. It will dissolve in water, so it's not going to be a solid. This is elemental sodium. It's not part of Brinkelhoff, so it is a solid. Sodium carbonate. Well, the good news is when I do these, I've already found the carbonates. 
Sodium is also a group 1A element, and how I know is by its placement on the periodic table. That means it will be aqueous, because if it's a carbonate with group 1, it's aqueous. And then hydrogen. Well, hydrogen is part of Brinkelhoff, and you're just going to have to straight up memorize it that the, the Inkelhoff part of it is going to be gases. So for hydrogen, we're going to write gas. Iron 2 oxide. Well, these two are, are two of the easiers. Um, iron is an element, it's not part of Brinkelhoff, so it's a solid. Oxygen, it is part of Brinkelhoff. And it's part of the, the Inkelhoff that's a gas, so we're going to put G for gas. FeO, I'm going to have to look it up. It's an oxide. So when we see our oxides over here, it says all oxides are insoluble except for group 1A. Well, well, iron is not in group 1A, which means this is going to be a solid. It will be insoluble in water. Then I have sodium plus oxygen makes sodium oxide. I'm going to deal with these the two elements first. I don't have to look anything up. I just have to have it in my head. Sodium is going to be a solid because it's not part of Brinkelhoff. And oxygen is part of Brinkelhoff, and it's part of the Inkelhoff part of it, so it's going to be a gas. Sodium oxide. I'm going to have to look it up. Um, it's just like this one was. Oxides are in the same places. All oxides are insoluble unless they're with group 1. Well, if you look up sodium on the periodic table, you'll see that it's a group 1 element, so that means it will be actually aqueous as far as like what we're practicing right now. If there's no reaction, then I'm not going to worry about doing this particular one because it just it doesn't happen. We'll go down here to the, the last one with potassium chloride. Um, you have chlorides and iodides for both of these because I've got two chlorides and I've got two iodides. The chlorides and the iodides are here together. All chlorides, bromides, and iodides are solid unless there was silver, lead, or mercury. So all of these should be solid unless, I mean, sorry, all of these should be soluble unless they're with silver, lead, or mercury. Not silver, lead, or mercury for this one. So that'll be aqueous. Silver, lead, like if this is with lead, that's going to turn it into a solid. That'll bump it to insoluble. Right here is another one. It's not with silver, lead, or mercury. So um, that'll be aqueous. And again, I am with um, a solid. Or that will be a solid on this side because I am with lead. So this one will be a solid. So I've got aqueous solid, aqueous solid. All right. If you're getting the gist of all of this stuff, you know, you can go back and you can replay it. You can pause it. Uh, I know I have another video on um, solubility rules, how to determine if something is soluble or not. You can watch those. You can ask questions. The next step is going to be making these things balanced so that they have the same number of atoms on both sides because currently we do not. So if you have potassium and potassium, I've got one of each, have one chlorine and two chlorines. That's not equal. One lead, one lead, two iodines, one iodine. Two is not equal to one. So our next step to make these into like the perfect chemical equations is working on balancing them. So look for that video to come next.